guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a weekly reading vlog. I last minute decided to join in on the Sailor Moonathon. It is a readathon taking place throughout May and it looked like a lot of fun. Basically, you join a team and I'm on team Sailor Moon. There's challenges and at the end of the month, whichever team read the most books wins. I don't really know. But yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. This month is going to be a little bit chaotic for me because I am moving in a couple weeks and I've done absolutely zero packing for it. So I'm on the right track. I don't really have a TBR set. I'm kind of just going to choose things based on my mood. There is a group book that I'm going to read. I'm not sure which one yet it is because the Sailor Moon group book I've already read. So I'm going to choose a book from a different group. But the first book I'm going to be starting with is Master and Apprentice by Claudia Gray. This is the newest Star Wars book to come out. I think it came out just a couple days ago. I believe that this book takes place at the very beginning of the canon timeline. So if you are thinking about getting into Star Wars books and you've never read any, I feel like this would be a good place to start because it takes place before everything else. And it follows Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. I don't know what the actual plot of this book is. I know that it does take place prior to the Phantom Menace movie, but I've been really excited for this book because Obi-Wan, I think Obi-Wan is my favorite Star Wars character. I go back and forth all the time. I'll say he's my favorite non-female Star Wars character. I feel like Leia and Padme would be above him, but I love Obi-Wan too. <laughs> so I have that on audiobook. So I think while I'm listening to that, I'm going to try to organize my life so that when I start packing, whenever that is, it's a lot easier. <laughs> but honestly, I'm just like, I'm so overwhelmed with how much work I have to do. I think packing my books is going to be the biggest task. I don't own as many books as I used to own. I've gotten rid of a ton, but it's still four bookshelves worth of books, which is too much. I feel like the fact that I'm in the exact same position I was a couple hours ago makes it look like no time has passed. I just finished Master and Apprentice, and I really liked it. I think I'm gonna give it four stars. I was right, it does take place at the very beginning of the Star Wars canon, so I definitely think that this book is a good... Oh my god, what is this? Who are you? You don't even go here. So I do think that this is a good place to start and it makes me really excited because the next book in the canon is Queen's Shadow which is a book about Padme and I think I'm gonna try to get to that sometime this month but I want to take a little bit of break because I don't want to get Star Wars burnout. Oh I should check what challenge I'm gonna count it for. Oh I should have got my glasses. So the challenges for Sailor Moonathon are to reread one of your favorite books, read a book that challenges you, read a book with a character that has special abilities, read a romance book, read a novella, read a book that includes the element of fire, read a book that is 400 pages or more, read a standalone, read a book with a gorgeous cover, read a contemporary novel, and read a dystopian. So I think that the only one this could really count for is a standalone. I also just got an email that my hold of the Wicked Saints audiobook came in from the library. I had already started reading this a couple weeks ago and then I didn't listen to the audiobook quick enough so I lost it and I had to go back in line. So I think I'm going to start listening to that and try to finish it and I will probably count that one for the read a book with a character that has special abilities challenge because the main character can do magic. So that counts. I finally finished Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I thought I would talk about it while I get ready for today. I really liked it. I'm going back and forth between four stars and 4.5 stars. I think it's closer to four than five. So I'm just gonna go with four stars, but I really did like it. So basically this book is a kind of gothic, Russian and Polish inspired fantasy and I've been following the author for a really long time. I definitely 
had a bias going into this book because I already just like really liked the author and I'd been seeing like all her tweets and fan art of the book for over a year. <laughs> And just from everything that she had said and the fan art I'd seen, I knew that I would like it. So yeah, it's like a gothic fantasy and it basically follows this girl named Nadia who is able to communicate with gods and she has these prayer beads and there's a bead for every single god and goddess and when she touches a specific bead, she's able to communicate with that god and they give her their powers. So some of them have like strength powers, some of them have healing powers, some of them have like sight powers. I don't know, they all have different powers and she is able to use those. And so because of that, she is being hunted down by her kingdom's enemies who basically want to get rid of the gods because they do blood magic and blood magic in this world is seen as heresy it's seen as like an act against the gods so all the people who live in Nadia's kingdom who are very devout they're pretty much their entire lives revolve around their religion and their gods they see blood magic as just being like the worst form of sin so Nadia is being hunted down because she can communicate with the gods the prince of the blood magic kingdom is the one that's hunting her down and so at the beginning of the book he attacks her monastery and she goes on the run and she ends up kind of running into this um rogue blood mage who is on his own mission to end the war basically and the tagline of this book is a girl a prince and a monster which was just like I love that. I really liked the monster character. His name, oh crap, hold on. His name is super hard to pronounce. His name is like Malachias. That's how the audiobook narrator said it, but I know that the author pronounces it different. But anyways, we're just gonna go with that for now. So Malachias, I loved his character. You can definitely see all the inspiration that the author was going for with him. He has Darkling vibes mixed with like a little bit of Kylo Ren in like the best way. I really really liked the romantic relationship that developed. I will say that it was a little bit quick for my liking. This is gonna be a series. I usually like when the romantic development happens over the course of the series and not necessarily in the first book. It did feel a little bit rushed to me, especially considering they're supposed to be like mortal enemies. But I get it. A lot of the time in the book, Nadia would be like, wow, I really want to kill him, but he's also hot, so I don't know. <laughs> I feel like if I was traveling with my mortal enemy who also happened to be extremely hot, I'd be a little conflicted too. And then I also really liked the prince, Seraphin. He was a super interesting character. He is bisexual, which I loved. And he was also just like a mess. He was pretty much drunk the entire book. He also had like a, a sidekick named Ostia. The author has confirmed that she is a lesbian. I also thought that the magic was really interesting because there were just basically two different types of magic. There was the God's magic and then the blood magic and both of those worked in really interesting ways. It was super cool because for Nadia's magic with the gods, she was able to communicate with them in her head. So throughout the book you would get different gods talking to her. They all kind of had different personalities and then with the blood magic, I will say that a big trigger warning for self-harm because obviously for blood magic they needed to cut themselves in order to do the magic. If you have any issues with that, I don't I don't know if I could recommend this book. I could see it potentially be very triggering. So as I was sitting here finishing my makeup, I got a package. I know what it is because the top of the package says the Bone Houses, which is a book that I requested. So I got The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. This sounds so good. It says Buffy meets the Walking Dead. It's a historical horror novel set in medieval Wales and it's about this girl and her brother who work in a graveyard as grave diggers. The problem in this area of being a grave digger is that the dead won't stay dead. There is a decades-old curse where the the dead 
rise again. They are called bone houses. And when a new character comes into town, the bone houses start attacking him. So him and the main character end up going on a journey to figure out what's going on. <laughs> That's a very vague synopsis. I'm sorry. The fact that it is a historical horror. I don't know if I've ever read any historical horror books. So I'm very excited for this and this comes out on September 19th. So now I think I'm going to start reading The Bone Witch by Ren Shupeko. This is going to be for the group book. It's not my group's book because my group book is The Star Touched Queen and I have already read that so I'm reading another group's pick. And I'm really excited for this. I know that Melanie from Mel to the Any loves this series. We usually have like very similar taste in books so I feel like I'm going to love this. All I know about it is that it's about this girl who when her brother dies she accidentally raises him from the dead and she discovers that she is a bone witch. I'm now just realizing that both of these <laughs> have similar vibes like they're both the bone something and about Raising the Dead. I've been loving books that have to do with necromancy, so if you have any recommendations of other books that have to do with necromancy, definitely let me know. I just finished The Bone Witch by Rin Chupeco and oh my god. I loved this book so much more than I thought I was going to. Basically in this world there are people called Ashes and those are people who have magic. The main character, Tia, when she is really young her brother dies and at his funeral she accidentally raises him from the dead and she discovers that she is a bone witch. And bone witches are considered dark Ashas and they're kind of feared and a little bit ostracized. Tia ends up going off with Lady Michaela who is a bone witch and she becomes Tia's mentor. Another reason why bone witches are feared is because they are able to control Deva and the Deva are these monstrous creatures who were created by the false prince. And then another part of the magic in this world that was probably my favorite is the fact that there are these things called a heart glass and basically people wear their heart glass around their neck and they change colors based on their feelings so if it's blue that means they're worried if it's red that means they're angry and then a silver heart glass means that you can draw runes and if you're a girl and you have a silver heart glass that means you're an Asha and if you're a boy and you have a silver heart glass that means you are conscripted into to the army. And then the other really cool but also scary thing about a heart's glass is that when you fall in love with someone, you can give them your heart's glass. Like Tia's parents have given each other their heart's glass, so Tia's mother wears her father's heart's glass and Tia's father wears her mother's heart's glass. And it can be a really loving thing, but the scary part of that is that when someone is wearing your heart's glass, they can control you. One of the aspects of this book that I think is what made me love it the most is that the the story is being told by Tia from the future. So an older version of Tia is telling this entire story to someone and so in between every chapter we get the point of view of this character called the Bard who is the one that Tia is telling the story to and we find out that Tia has been exiled for some reason and the person that she loves is dead and she's raising all of these deva to create this army. None of that is a spoiler by the way, you find out all of that at the very beginning. But it's so interesting that basically the future Tia is a villain and we're going back and hearing the story of her childhood where she was first learning all of her magic and during that time she was very innocent and naive and she was still finding herself. So the contrast of the two was so interesting and all I wanted to do was figure out how she got from who she was to this like villainous character. I also really liked the potential 
romantic direction that it was going in. There really wasn't romance in this book. Tia does have a crush on someone, but nothing ever happens really. The ending of this book definitely hints towards the next book having more of a romantic development, but in this book in particular, there really isn't any romance. I would say that the relationship that was the focus of this book was the relationship between Tia and her brother. Since she raised her brother from the dead, he basically becomes her familiar and he follows her everywhere she goes and he protects her and they have kind of a psychic bond where they can feel if the other one is in trouble. I loved their relationship. Her brother is so fiercely protective of her. I also really loved Tia's best friend, Lick. He is a boy and he has a silver hearts glass, which means he should be a soldier in the army, but he doesn't want to do that. He really wants to be an Asha and there's a very big like emphasis in this world on women doing feminine things and men doing masculine things and Lick really wants to challenge that. He wants to dance and wear dresses and do things that are seen as feminine. So I really really liked his character. There's also very small hinting at a potential sapphic side relationship. It was so small. I do, so I, it, it could have just been me reading into it, but I'm really hoping that something happens with that in the next book. But yeah, overall, I really loved this, and the way that it ended, I'm so upset I don't have the second book. I already put it on hold at my library, but it's gonna be a while, because I would totally read it right now if I had it. So I think the next book I'm going to read is Red, White, and Royal Blue. I have already started this. I think I'm about like 30 or 40 percent into it, and I'm already loving it. I feel like it's gonna end up being a five-star book, but basically it is a new adult romance between the son of the first female president of the United States and the Prince of England. I just finished Red, White, and Royal Blue, and I was right. I gave it five stars. It was so good, and it was like everything that I wanted it to be. It was cute and sexy and romantic and funny. Like, I laughed so many times. I also related to this book so much. It is insane how much I am like Alex because he's bisexual, he's half white, half Mexican, he's from Austin, Texas. Is he just the male version of me? I really loved his character. I loved Prince Henry. The romance was everything. I realized I didn't really explain much about the plot other than it's the first son and the Prince of England. Basically, they are enemies and at the very beginning of the book they get into a public fight and it causes this huge international scandal. So in order to combat that, they have to pretend to be best friends. <laughs> While they're pretending to be friends, they develop feelings. It's just really funny because Alex, there was this one particular scene where he is coming to terms with his bisexuality and <laughs> he was thinking about this incident that happened in college where he had oral sex with his male roommate and back then like when it was happening he kind of rationalized it as just like you know guys being guys, just dudes being dudes. What's better than this? Guys being dudes. And then later, when he realized he might be bisexual, he was like, oh, yeah, that was super gay. <laughs> and I've literally had that moment before. When I was a teenager, the first person I ever kissed was a girl. And at the time, I was like, just friend things. <laughs> and now, looking back, I'm like, yeah, I was just, you know, super gay. <laughs> I gave this five stars. I loved it. I cannot wait to read whatever else this author comes out with in the future. So I don't know what I'm gonna read next. I think I might take a break from reading just for like a day. This morning I started watching Roswell, New Mexico and I'm kind of uh, obsessed with it. It's super cheesy and like typical CW but there is a chaotic bisexual alien who actually says the word bisexual. So of course I have to keep watching it. Hi! Hello! <laughs> I think a package is being delivered.
I'm gonna go check. <laughs> no, it was not a package. I got my hopes up for nothing. <laughs> oh my God. But now he's gonna bark for so long. <laughs> Loki, I love you, but stop. So it is May 7th and I think we're going to end the vlog today because I I make my life so much more complicated than it has to be. I'm currently filming two different reading vlogs. So this whole week I've been reading more books than I've been telling you guys. I'm also reading books for another vlog that's like one of those reading experiment type of vlogs. So I can't tell you guys what those books are. Like yesterday I read an entire book but I couldn't tell this vlog, what I was reading, because it's for my other vlog, is just complicated. And I don't know why I did this to myself, but I just like to make my life more complicated, you know? Today, actually, a lot of really good books came out. Middle Game by Seanan McGuire came out, and then Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins, and I'm on hold on my library for both of those audiobooks, and I should be getting them soon. I think I'm like second in line, so I didn't want to start any books that were too long, so that once I get those, I can start them. So I think I'm going to start reading Storm of Locusts by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is the sequel to The Lightning... Not The Lightning Thief. The Lightning Thief? No, that's Percy Jackson. Trail of Lightning. That's what that one's called. Um, this is the sequel to Trail of Lightning, which is a native-inspired fantasy about this monster hunter and I really liked the first book so I'm excited to read the second one but also I wanted to just let you guys know this isn't an official announcement there will be an official announcement coming probably next week but Lainey and I are hosting the third round of Smutathon it's going to be on June 3rd to the 9th and we have also created an official Twitter account so if you guys want to stay up to date with all the info and know when we post our announcements I will leave a link to the Twitter down below and you can go follow it. I'm honestly blown away because we launched the Twitter yesterday and we already have almost 300 followers which is just insane to me and I'm I'm <sighs> I'm just constantly blown away by the support you guys give Smutathon. So yeah, I think I'm going to end the vlog right here because I do need to edit this video and also I need to edit the other video that I was filming. Ooh. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!